So the new SketchUp for iPad has launched and it really is amazing. But you're a practicing architect, you're way too busy with old SketchUp to learn this new one, and you're probably just going to forget it all anyway, right? So what's the point? Well, never fear. My name is James Akers. I'm a registered architect and full-time professional renderer. I teach iPad for designers at UCLA, and I'm making the transition from desktop architect to iPad architect just like you. So I hope you'll allow me to slug through these amazing new apps on my time, figure out exactly the best ways to use them so you don't have to, and make it as easy as possible for you to find just the tutorial you need right when you need it without searching through all of YouTube. Or, God forbid, reading an owner's manual. When you first launch SketchUp for iPad, you'll see this is your home screen. It comes with a new sample model already loaded up, so let's open that before we import our own model. Okay, nice design, and useful if you don't have one of your own models at hand. Meantime, on the left side, you see the home button at the top, then your portal to Trimble Connect, which is essentially cloud storage to keep your projects synced across devices. Then you'll see the little college graduation cap, which is the learn icon, where you'll find very quick little reminders of some of the basics. And lastly, you'll see the feedback icon, Let's tap the home button again, and this time you're going to want to import one of your own models before we test this out. So go ahead and tap create new up here to the left. And then at the top left, tap the import arrow and choose any one of your recent SketchUp models stored in your iPad files. Then when you're sure you have the right one, tap on the screen to finalize the import. I'll choose this one here that I used for my recent Morfolio Shadow Maker video. And now let's just explore how you navigate by touch in the new SketchUp for iPad. Start by putting your finger right in the middle of the model and move it around, and you'll see that you can orbit the model in this one finger mode. Now use two fingers side to side and up and down to pan around the model this way. Now use pinch and zoom with two fingers to zoom into the model when you spread your fingers and zoom back out when you pinch them back together. This is the equivalent of zooming in without changing the field of view. Also, you can make this quick pinching motion to see all of your work within the iPad frame, making it very convenient to get back to the big picture with one simple gesture, something many of us wish desktop SketchUp would do. But what about changing the field of view, that most tedious of tasks we all dread doing in desktop SketchUp? Well, that has now been radically simplified, and all you need to do is use three fingers in an up and down movement to change the field of view in real time, allowing those of us whose livelihoods depend on the beauty of our SketchUp scenes to get exactly the right camera lens and wide angle or telephoto effect we need. So that's how you navigate around with one, two, and three finger touches. Now let's go for broke and see if four fingers does anything. And sure enough, four fingers lets you switch back and forth to different applications. So that's navigation by touch. But before we find out where the good people at SketchUp have hidden all the tools, I want to give you one more quick taste of how potentially awesome this pencil interface is. Using our new finger skills, let's pan over to the side of the model over here. This exercise is going to involve both this new auto shape icon here between the eraser and the rectangle tool and these front and back arrows at the top left next to the home button. What I want you to do with me is tap on the auto shape icon, then make a quick circle anywhere in the gray area and watch what happens. Let's try that again. Tap the back arrow next to the home icon to go back a step. Reactivate the auto shape tool and draw a couple of freehand circles. They don't have to be well drawn, pausing long enough after each one to let SketchUp complete the circles. In fact, I'll do a little experiment here and actually try to make a poorly drawn circle to see at what point SketchUp cannot figure out what I'm doing. And you'll see that it's actually pretty hard to draw a circle so poorly that SketchUp can't figure it out. Now let's tap out of our circle world and this time draw some rectangles. But now let's go a step further and add a vertical line after we draw one of our funky freehand rectangles and watch what happens. Notice that the rectangle doesn't even have to be drawn particularly well for SketchUp to understand roughly the size and the height of the rectangle you want to draw. The rectangle rises to the height of the vertical line you draw. So if I take it up here, I get a skyscraper. But if I only take it up here, I get a low warehouse building. 
We talked about how you can do two finger tap to go backward, but this time let's use the new pencil eraser to delete these lines by simply scrubbing over them. Now let's try something really wild. This time don't draw a circle or rectangle, but make kind of a scrubby cloud shape like I'm showing here and see what happens. Well, not like that, because that time I got a sphere. Don't ask me how, but somehow SketchUp has figured out that you want to draw either a rectangle or a cubic rectangle in the shape of your freehand scroll. If my scrubby cloud is too angular, SketchUp thinks I want a rectangle. But when I make these loopy shapes, I get a volumetric rectangle. And of course, all of these auto-shaped cubes and cylinders, no matter how you draw them, can be partially or completely activated, selected, moved around, resized, rescaled, just like in desktop SketchUp. So now you can create them with a pencil, but then modify them to exactly what you need using the normal methods. Oh, and that reminds me, we've talked about selecting surfaces and objects with one, two, and three tap gestures, but let me quickly show you the group selection tool, which is this little arrow in a dotted teardrop shape up here. Just tap that, and draw a circle around the part of your drawing you want to select. You can select one object at a time, or even one surface at a time when it's not in a group mode, or you can come down here at the bottom and choose the Add to Selection tool or the Subtract from Selection tool and get all those advantages of the group selection. If you're still drawing along with me, and I hope you are, let's tap the back arrow here, get out of this section, now let's go back to the home page and let's start a completely new project from scratch. So I'll go up to the top left, hit create new, and up comes the SketchUp interface that I'm used to, the so-called SketchUp workspace. Now let's try the line tool here, okay? And tap at the origin and then extend the pencil and you'll see that the line tool, well, they're a little bit of a snafu. But as long as you see that green dot, you'll see that the line tool starts drawing the line just where you want it. Now up here in the manual line entry, uh, that old familiar ghost is back, those strange 16th of an inch dimensions that kind of drive the contractors wild that I work with. But that can be fixed. And let me show you how. We can go down here in the model info section and make sure under precision that we, in this case, I think I'll set it as large as one inch. And I'll also set length snapping to one inch. And I don't know about you, but when I'm in early stage concept design, I really don't need anything closer than an inch. In fact, I talked about possibly trying to get a three inch accuracy, but the SketchUp people told me that was not possible. But check this out. When I draw this line now and I look up here, it's a little hard to see, but there you can see those lines are now extending by one inch increments. And I can even stop it where I want it. It's not that hard. Under normal circumstances it is, but I can say make that, or rather stretch it to 9 feet 5 inch, and not have to worry about manual entry of those lines. So getting back to our line tool, now let's draw a line starting anywhere in 3D space not necessarily connected to any of these axes, and move the tip around to see how it snaps to the different axes. Then draw a line of any length back along the green axis. Now let's start a line at a right angle from the green dot, which appears after you complete each line. Then bring a third line back along the same green axis, and notice when the red dotted line shows up, meaning you're aligned with the point of origin of your first line. Now close that line up, making sure you see the green dot appear, and you have yourself a hand-drawn rectangle. Now let's tap the selection tool, then tap on the rectangle once to see the surface activated, tap twice to see the entire rectangle activated, and tap the move tool, and activate the move tool to move the rectangle back to the origin. So there you have how to create a rectangle or a wall plane with the line drawing tool and the rectangle tool. So let's do our double finger tap to go back to an empty canvas. And of course, none of these cubic rectangles we've been creating would be complete without doors and windows. 
So let's go back up and tap the auto shape tool and then draw a crude version of a door with a doorknob on the right side. And look what happens. SketchUp has recognized the graphic symbol for a door with a doorknob on the side and automatically generated a door. Now let's do the same for a casement window with the hinges on the right side. And voila, a three-dimensional casement window. And with another move that suggests a really interesting future, if you double tap on that casement, up comes almost a manufacturer's sizing panel. Now it's not associated with a specific manufacturer yet, but look at all this versatility. You can even change the window opening angle. And of course you can move this up and down or around just like you could any simple square or line. This is obviously no replacement for Revit or the precision of BIM, but with these features, being able to draw picture windows, awning windows, left opening, sliding doors, right opening, sliding doors, it's just a real shortcut to help you get even further along the road in your early concept design. And of course, what would SketchUp be without these fantastically simple to use shadows? To turn them on, tap the shadows icon on the right, then toggle the shadows on, then toggle to use for shading if you're into that. Then just adjust your time and date to see where your shadows will fall. You can even adjust the lightness and darkness of the background surfaces of the model to create the effect you want. If you're interested in learning SketchUp for iPad or Barfolio Trace or Procreate in a more linear way without bouncing back and forth between YouTube videos, I'll be offering classes in all three, so please sign up at the link in the description below and I'll keep you informed as to when they're coming out. In the meantime, I'd love for you to watch this video up here if you're a Procreate fan or this video down here if you're a Morfolio fan. And we'll see you in the next video.